Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the Don Garlitz, a.k.a. Big Daddy Winds Charger Dragster. It's a 125 scale MPC model kit, number 810. Now, MPC rates this as a skill level 2 for the intermediate builder. And using a torch and a welder, Don Garlitz built his first drag race car under his oak tree in the backyard in 1954. Since then, he went on to be one of the most winning and innovative dragster competitors there was. He was a pioneer of the slingshot dragster, and he won his first NHRA race that he'd ever entered. Now, you can uh, find these kits still on online auctions, but they're out of production, and sometimes at local hobby shops. Now, the kit comes in 70 parts, molded in white, chrome, clear, black, and a vinyl seat, a motor drive belt, and tires. The assembly is straightforward with sub-assemblies and final sequences. The motor is nicely detailed, but with some basic wiring, it really looks good. Now the body is a multi-part unit, and also included with this kit is a nice set of decals, a miniature display box, and it's in that retro deluxe packaging, and also includes a uh, t-shirt iron-on. When you're done, it's about 11 inches long, 2 inches wide, and 2 inches high. Here are the contents of this kit. As you can see, everything's separately bagged. The chrome is separate. The tires are separate to keep from any burn-in. And the decals are very colorful. Registry uh, and color of these decals is very good. Uh, but I suggest that you use some of the uh, aftermarket uh, setting solutions uh, for the longer and bigger decals to help them settle over any of the panel lines etc and, and contours of the body. Most of the construction will also be using some liquid cement but sometimes super glue for fragile parts and white or clear glue for the windows. Also make sure that you heed the manufacturer's safety and use guidelines when using any of the products that you hear or see used in the review. Here are the parts you'll need for the 426 Hemi drag motor, except for the drive belt and a homemade distributor that we'll put in. Now, notice that the white parts are the block and heads, and we'll be painting those with some uh, Chrysler Hemi orange. Since we're going to wire this motor, we need to um, remove the molded-in boots uh, for the uh, spark plugs on the uh, valve cover. So, um, just to kind of slice those off and then drill a hole through there so that you can put the spark plug wires in place later. The three on the right are done and the, uh, the one on the left is still there to show you the difference. Assemble the blower drive and the intake to the top there and note of course that you'll have to remove any of the chrome plating from the areas where you want to join with glue um, and that goes for paint as well. Uh, paint and glue uh, are plating will, will keep the glue from adhering and bonding. So simply add the rest of the chrome pieces to the engine. Uh, she looks pretty nice against that hemi orange. And you can see the spark plug wires uh, have been installed here with the homemade distributor. Now uh, you'll need to uh, drill out the hole uh, so that you can put the shaft for the distributor in place. And the coil wire there, that's the black one, it's sticking up. Um, also note that there are butterfly uh, flaps there in the intake. And those were just made from a piece of sprue that was sliced off and painted red for contrast uh, and just glued into place there in the uh, openings. Uh, now you can set the uh, engine assembly aside and you know uh, of course that the exhaust headers are not in place yet. It's easier to uh, line those up uh, after the motor is installed in the chassis or at least mocked up for a fit. Now I prepared the body for um, uh, paint and removed all the parting lines and any of the mold lines and cleaned up uh, any uh, of the sprue joints that were still attached. And then I used some fine sandpaper um, and went over all the pieces and then sprayed it with some primer sealer and set it aside about an hour to dry. So get the chassis out of the kit and we'll uh, clean that up with some uh, file sticks and uh, that's a nice feature being a one-piece chassis. Most of the time you have to assemble these with cross members. Just make sure that uh, it looks straight and true uh, to the horizontal plane, you know, looking down the length of it there. 
Now once that's uh, prime, uh, all cleaned up, prime that, and uh, after that's uh, had a little chance to dry, you can set that uh, along with the rest of the body parts, and we're going to spray them, uh, spray them with some gloss black. Um, and I like using lacquers because they uh, they dry quickly. But you can use your favorite paint here, uh, a gloss black paint for this particular model. Once the chassis is dry, uh, we're going to start assembly with the pieces you see here. Uh, that's the rear end and that long control arm. And both of these parts were pre-painted uh, with a, um, a gloss black. And then the drive shaft there was painted steel color. Now, once uh, the, I had the rear end and lever in place, I glued the pumpkin to the front and then the drive shaft to the mount and to the pumpkin. And make sure that you install the rear end with the gear. That's the pumpkin as shown in the instructions. Otherwise, you won't be able to install uh, the rear end through the frame to, to get it into place there. Locate the uh, vinyl seat insert. And next, uh, we'll use that and insert uh, that and glue it into the seat bucket in the back of the frame, as you can see here. Next, we'll glue the frame into the chassis. And I attached the headers with some slow setting glue here to give them a little time to kind of tack dry, but not dry thoroughly. So then I put um, some glue to the draft and also to the pins on the side of the engine that will attach to the frame, having scraped off the paint there where they joined. Now, I slid the bell housing onto the drive shaft and lowered the front of the engine to where the mount pins met the frame and held it in place for a few minutes to allow the glue to set up enough so that it stayed in place. Now, fortunately, the headers were lined right up and I didn't need to adjust them, but I've often found that that's the case, so that's why I choose to use this method to install the headers. So get the uh, front tires and rims out here. Uh, and um, having the uh, motor drying in the chassis, you'll have time to work on these. And they're two-part uh, wheels uh, with the rubber tires. And you'll have to remove the injection cross with a hobby knife there and trim that out uh, so that it's nice on the inside. And then uh, we're going to uh, slip that onto the outside rim. We're going to kind of sandwich the fronts and backs together. Uh, but make sure you scrape that uh, chrome plating off the back of the rim in order to uh, glue them together. And now you'll need these uh, parts to assemble the uh, Tampo printed rear slicks, uh, which are a very nice touch. And uh, the rims consist of four parts. The chrome exterior rim half and the inner half, the axle ring, and then the brake caliper shoe. Uh, the last three parts I sprayed uh, gloss black and then allowed those to dry. And once they were dry, uh, the ring was put on to the inner rim half and then the halves were glued together. The tires and slicks were then rolled on uh, to the rims and the parts set aside to dry. Grab the fuel line and the tank from the uh, kit there. And this system consists of uh, those two pieces. So the tank is pretty simple, two-part affair. It's top and bottom half, and the fuel pump and the fuel line is all one piece. So after gluing the tank halves together, it was glued into the slots on the top frame rail uh, after removing the paint and the chrome to make sure that it would stick uh, on the locating tabs. Now the fuel pump and the line were painted steel uh, for the line and the pump ends, while the main body was uh, gloss black. The end of the fuel line slips into a hole in the tank and the pump end is glued to the front of the engine plate through the center of the drive belt. This unit is uh, chrome but I painted the pedal area there with some aluminum. And we're going to glue the accelerator and brake pedal and the pedal arm uh, on, into the locations in the chassis frame just above the drive shaft. Next we're going to take the uh, front end uh, piece here, uh, the axle, and we're going to glue it to the frame scrape off uh, the paint and the chrome where they join and remove the uh, locating arms shown in the uh, as indicated in the uh, instructions there and then we're going to use some super glue for this to make sure that we've got some good strong joints uh, because this supports the whole thing in the front end the uh, internal chassis parts go into place there and they're pretty straightforward according to the instructions and now it's time to finish up the build portion the last few items before the body parts are installed are the steering column and the mount 
uh, that you see here. And note that I had to enlarge the hole in the rear end mount in order for the steering column to pass through it. So I recommend you check this uh, at the beginning of the build to make sure that it will go through. Otherwise it's, too, it's pretty hard to get in after it's installed. So the mount was first glued to the right top of the frame rail uh, where there's a locating slot and the chrome steering column was then put through the hole on the mount on the rear of the end pumpkin and glued to the cross mount location. So with the uh, chassis assembly completed we're going to add the steering control linkage. That's the piece you see here in the middle and to the top it's all chrome. It's a very long piece and it's got a few attachment points on the tree but uh, you have to be careful to remove it because it's fragile. So once you get that uh, off, you clean up the piece, the you know the places where it had uh, been attached to the sprue tree, and I just use a silver sharpie uh, to touch it up. Uh, although the new Molotov chrome pen would work real well here too, um, and then uh, you're simply going to uh, glue it into place to the steering mount and the front axle control arm hole. So now we're going to add the uh, left and right. Um, uh, driver compartment panels, the sides and the bottoms, and uh, these two panels here, uh, of course, uh, had been painted black lacquer, and um, they have the rear end axle holes in them, and they fit over the axles, so I glued them together along the bottom joint where they touch the frame, using just a little glue in the, on the frame locations, but once again, make sure that you scrape off any paint there for a good adhesion. You can see where the um, uh, side panels are put into place there and and we're going to add the roll cage uh, to the slotted locations on the top frame rail uh, at this time also. Now the red arrows uh, point to the axle weights here and I used um, a sharpie to uh, kind of uh, take off some of the chrome plating there uh, where the weights themselves are and then left the mounts uh, chrome and then I uh, slid the front tires, which were assembled earlier, into place on the axle ends along with the retaining cap. And uh, with those in place, I was able to now glue the weights on and ensure that they were both uh, equidistant from the tires uh, for a good symmetry. So go ahead and grab the rear slicks that we had assembled earlier. And on my builds, I always glue the um, the tires, the rims to the uh, axles there because I don't want them to roll off the shelf. Uh, and it also keeps them in perfect position. So put those into place at this time. Although uh, if you want to keep them rolling, you'll have to uh, forego the glue there and just press them into place. Now first the brake part was slid onto the axle followed by the slicks. And, uh, and then uh, apply some glue to the tip of the axle. And so with all the rubber mounted now, I began adding the driver's compartment body cover, the main body, and the nose cover, and the belly tip. Now, uh, those can still be adjusted for uh, uh, any kind of gaps that are uh, visible there uh, with a little bit of sanding. Uh, although I did kind of test fit those earlier the best I could, but you can still make adjustments there because you have to remove the glue off of those edges anyway. So go ahead and glue those all into place, although the instructions show you not gluing the driver compartment into place so that you can display the interior. Um, and at this point, the winch charger is done except for the decals, the windshield, and the parachute. Make sure that you use plenty of uh, warm water to uh, let the decal soak for at least one full minute. And then, if I were you, I'd use some setting solutions that are available uh, to make sure that these uh, conform to all the contours of the body. Also, um, kind of smooth those out when, after you lay them down with uh, a soft cloth to push any uh, trap water or air bubbles out from underneath. Now, the instructions are pretty vague on the placement of the decals, so as you can see, um, I put the sponsor decals here and the stripes like that, uh, as well as the script decals in position where you see here. And then uh, there's a winds on the airfoil wing, and uh, it looks really nice uh, when it's done. They're very striking gold and red decals, uh, so they're a beautiful uh, uh, accompaniment to the black lacquer. After the decals have dried overnight, uh, I took the windshield here, and you can also see the chute, and those will be going on into position next, and I used some clear parts glue for the windshield to uh, place that in front of the driver's cockpit there. And 
uh, it was added and that uh, completes the uh, uh, construction with the exception of that parachute which is uh, the final part glued into position it's got a little bit of uh, it's got a red strap on it here for some detailing but just glue that onto the frame bar there and the build is complete well there you have it this is a beautiful looking model when it's done and even though it looks pretty intricate I'd say that uh, level 2 rating for the intermediate builder is just right on. Um, it's a gorgeous uh, display with the visual uh, contrast of the red and the gold and the black and the chrome. Uh, on your shelf it's going to turn some heads. Now the one piece chassis is a great idea uh, and the uh, rubber tires belt and the seat were excellent they all fit in very well the decals were great too even though the placement was a, a little vague you can see where they go and there's a lot of reference uh, uh, photos on the internet for this you know vehicle so depending on the uh, era and race it probably uh, moved around a little bit so there's some flash on the parts and the seams show kind of how old the mold is you know but uh, they're easily cleaned up just takes a little extra time uh, and the chrome parts you know they had some pretty heavy attachments you'll have to smooth those off and then repair them best you can with uh, oh I would suggest the Molotel chrome ink pen um, and and they should look just fine too um, overall I just love this and if I were you I'd buy one and put it on my shelf we hope you like this premium step-by-step -step model kit review and so that you don't miss any more Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, but you can find us on Facebook and at our website, rightonreplicas.com. Thanks!